Right, we've got Vincent Wall from New Stock Business Breakfast with us in studio to talk to us about um, what's going on at the FAI. Vincent, before we get into the identity of Roy Barrett and, and what he might do, just from your take as an observer of this over the last while, um, corporate governance and the importance of uh, a strong financial backbone in a sports organisation, you know, these stories kind of rumble along in Irish sports once every two decades or every decade or so. It, it, are we getting better as a country? Is this the type of thing that, <laughs> that uh, we understand that we actually need, that it's important that, you know? We would have thought we had improved, uh, Ger, but I mean, what's emerged in the FAI over recent years? Now, everybody knew, uh, everybody knew, uh, even those not as closely linked to sport like myself, but everybody knew that John Delaney had a very strong personal authority over most things that happened in the FAI, but th the extent to which the former board, the outgoing board, seemed to be completely cowed by him and, and dominated by him. I think in an era when such a focus on corporate governance in every sort of organisation from large corporations to charities, and we've seen problems there, where, where there's been such a focus on it, on getting that right uh, and making sure that the, the lines of separation in terms of decision making and, and, and strategic guidance are, are clear. It's still a huge shock at how, how bad it was in the FBI. The charity sector is actually interesting. I haven't heard anybody bring that up before. There have been significant turnarounds in big organisations who had public trust, lost public trust, and who have started to gain it back by appointing independent boards and having a, a, a clean sweep. So there is a template. There is well, a template in Irish life to fix this. There is absolutely a template, and, and that's the one, I suppose, that, that the, uh, both Sports Ireland and, and, and the government are, are trying to follow, and UEFA perhaps. Uh, but it's going to take time. Now, you, you, they're the first immediate steps to put a board in place, and through a board, I suppose, a, a chief executive uh, in time, uh, that slowly make, start making the right decisions, start saying the right things, start communicating properly with all stakeholders, not just, uh, not just um, uh, but internally to staff as well. But that takes time. It's going to take an awful lot of time uh, to build up that trust again. Uh, how do you do that? Do you, like, uh, and is that by being honest firstly okay that helps clear honest transparent communications as often as they can they obviously you know an organization like the FEI that is in such debts now and will be in such sensitive discussions with with the likes of banks uh, with other stakeholders including UEFA and and with the government in terms of its ongoing subsidy uh, they won't be able to tell every iota at a, you know whenever journalists or others want it but when information is expected, reasonably expected, they should be absolutely clear and forthright and straightforward. That's the start. So you put a plan in place, you, you do a deal with the banks, which I, I, I haven't quite worked out exactly how, what the government involvement is going to be. Will no. there be cash from the government? Will it just be a guarantee? I, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, but the banks are going to need some sort of ultimate underwriter uh, if, if, if they do a deal. Now, there's, you know, there's there's all sorts of arrangements out there basically that, that the, the, the existing loans can be extended and, and therefore the payments are, are, are kicked down the line. But I would think banks are commercial organisations and they will ultimately require some sort of underwriting, uh, not necessarily a guarantee, but underwriting, whether that's the government or whether that's UEFA. So underwriting, how would that work? There would be actually that no one... Ultimately, money. if the FAI failed to meet the new covenants, the new agreements in place, that somebody will step in, that the banks will have surety, that the bank, somebody will step in. The FEI has very few physical assets, as we know. Yeah, so that wouldn't actually mean cash from the taxpayer so much as a, an agreement that we will, you know, if, if this new board doesn't work and if the company doesn't attract sponsors, then the taxpayer will have to step in and foot the bill for the Aviva or whatever it is. I, 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 can, I can imagine any, any, any government very reluctant to put the taxpayer on the, on, on the line here. So where you UEFA come into this, I don't know. Um, but the one physical asset the FAI has is its share in the Aviva. But that, as, as Martin Murphy, the, the director of the Aviva Stadium and others have pointed out, is an extremely difficult asset to, to sell because yeah. of the way it's linked in with... Other, other issues and, and with the IRFU. It's also not an asset that um, you're selling forever. There's a, it's yeah. a short term, yeah. not that short term, it's like another 30 years left on that, on that but it's a, a lease arrangement. So it's complicated. Very complicated. Tell yeah. us about Roy Barrett. What, what would you expect somebody who is the MD of, of good, good Buddy Stockbrokers to bring to an organisation now? 
Yeah, firstly, I think a lot of people, including myself, were, were very surprised when Roy Barrett's name was mentioned. Uh, first thing in the Irish Times yesterday morning, to be, to be fair. Uh, he is very media shy. I, I know him a long time, but not well, because he tends to shun uh, people like us publicly, like journalists, and, and that's his prerogative. But, you know, he's been he's been managing uh, director of Good Buddy Stockbrokers, one of the largest brokerages in the country, for 24 years now. Right. And he's brought, he's brought that company through a number of very significant changes. It was owned by AIB. AIB had to sell it uh, as part of the whole financial crash back in 2010. Um, it, it then became partly owned, partly owned by management, uh, including himself, and by Fexco of Kerry. And at the moment, intriguingly, it's being bought in a 150 million euro deal by the Bank of China. Right. So there are big issues coming down the line and big opportunities for Good Buddy itself. And there's no there's no uh, expectation that Roy Barrett is is going to leave Good Buddy. It's a, it's a, it's an it's an it's ex exciting time for him. But he's very astute financially very well respected in financial and I think probably in political circles as well uh, because you know th there would have been a lot of political toing and froing when AIB had to sell Good Buddy back in 2010 so I think he's just a very respected very astute figure if low profile uh, still uh, it was a surprise to me I didn't realize he had the football links he has, even though they're they're under the radar, um, no previous links with the FAI, but close to Niall Quinn, as we know, and was named in that reform document that the Quinn Group put together last year. I gather he played at a pretty serious level for UCD, where he did a law degree back in the day. Uh, a, a, a serious Leeds United fan, which we won't hold against him, but uh, you know, he. Uh, <laughs> it's coming good for him. It's coming good for him. Um, and I gather hasn't missed an Irish international, good, bad, friendly, or uh, competitive for nearly 30 years. Uh, how autonomous do you expect someone like Roy Barrett to be within all of this? How much responsibility do you think the FAI will allow him to have and how much direction will they take from an independent chairman? Well, uh, within the FAI, so we need to distinguish between what an independent chairman in any organisation does and what a chief exec. So the first thing they will, the, amongst the first things they will need to do uh, is to uh, advertise for a new chief executive. Mm. Uh, and the way it works in any organisation, if corporate governance is correct, is that the chief executive and the management team, and they will have to be uh, put in place, uh, will, will basically set out a strategy that the board will then either approve or not. Uh, but within the FAI itself, uh, the new board and the other the other new directors coming in will have will have very significant authority because one they will approve the the the, the senior management team uh, and, and put their shape on that uh, and secondly that management team whatever strategy they come up with financial uh, development any of that will have to go to that uh, board for approval and given. Uh, the weakness of management in, in the FAI uh, over recent years, that board will have very significant authority. Yeah, you'd imagine that they'll be looking to these three figures uh, as a huge source of education for future boards because like, you look at the disparity between the experience of someone of these three names and someone like John Delaney, who clearly, I guess, was constantly within football administration, made a mess of the thing at the end. You look at these three characters, and I grant we're at the outset here, we haven't seen their track record with the FAI for a second just yet, but it looks like they're the type of people who aren't going to, to mess it up too dramatically. Well, I suppose one of, the, one of the key differences between what these people will do and what John Delaney did, uh, and leaving aside the question marks over what John Delaney did, I mean, John Delaney was the chief executive. He, in, a, in, a, in an organisation that had proper... Uh, the corporate governance, he would have laid his plans, he would have had a good relationship with the, mm. with the board, that, that's required, but he would have laid his plans in front of a board and basically that board, you know, sh should challenge those plans, should challenge them and in certain circumstances, in, in terms of where the financial mess that, that the FAI has got to know, should have rejected those plans. So uh, so what this board will do, those, these new independent directors, particularly Roy Barrett, the new chairman, is they will challenge the management team that they put in place, uh, every decision they make, guide them, challenge them, and if needs be, if they feel certain decisions or certain plans are too risky or are not, they'll reject them. Yeah. And they have the authority to do that. Vincent, when you see these names, so it's Roy Barrett, it's Catherine Guy and Liz Joyce, they're, um, I, none of these names were speculated about uh, until yesterday, obviously. So there was no sense that these were available. You know, we didn't know who these... And we shouldn't really be talking about the independent directors on the board. Like, we don't mm. really ever talk about the IRFU board or really the, the executive of That's the... That's because it works well. ...of the GEA, exactly. So, we, you know, you hope that these people are not high-profile in any way because something has gone wrong. They've been called before an Oireachtas committee for something that's gone wrong. But um, they seem like they're fairly, fairly heavy hitters. In, like, it seems like the FAI and um, AMROP, who, who went out to seek these people, have done a good job so far. 
Yeah, it, it does look that way. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, particularly in terms of the chairman chairmanship, I know AMROP were out there for the months before Christmas, very much guided and, and in touch with Sport Ireland all the time as well, I believe, uh, looking for for a big, respected, experienced figure in the corporate world. And I know the likes of Morris Pratt was approached, uh, former uh, Quinsworth and, and, and retail executive, very, very respected figure. Uh, he turned it down in the end. But um, what they were looking here for here was, was experience, was credibility, uh, was a safe pair of hands, uh, people who could, as you say, guide a new management team, uh, give confidence back to the people who work for the FAI and for the people who customers and supporters all around the country that somebody decent is in charge at last. Uh, and as you say, uh, Catherine Guy, uh, a, a very senior lawyer running a firm herself now, uh, Sixth Car Leasing. Uh, Liz Joyce, a very, and HR is going to be a big issue for yeah. the FAI going Especially forward. Especially with and, uh, essential layoffs. She's a senior. Uh, yeah. she's, so these people won't take the actual executive decisions, but they will there be there to guide, challenge, and ultimately approve the decisions that the new management team will take. Roy Barrett's going to walk into any room in Dublin with bankers, with government, and immediately everybody's going to be going, right, this is serious. Yeah, this is serious. That's not to say he's going to get his own way. That's not to say that it's not going to be a very difficult, challenging road to try and offset or, or kick down the road a lot of those debts and their repayment schedules, but he starts by being a hugely respected figure. Vincent, great stuff. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. That's uh, Vincent Wall. Check him out on News Talk Breakfast every morning. It is one minute past eight this morning here. On Thursday morning on OTBM, we're going to be back with your top five stories in the morning after these.